modern jet clipper arrives in an ancient land, India, unlike any other country on Earth. In store for travelers are unforgettable surprises. As modern as the cities may appear, there is still a mood of the ages, an aura that casts a spell and carries the newcomer over centuries in time. For here were well-planned cities with buildings of brick 7,000 years ago. In Calcutta, Bombay, Delhi, in cities large and small, you sense a holiness of the Hindus and a sacredness of their homeland, where a spirit from the past is creating progress in the present across the nation. You begin to feel the mysticism. You realize you're off the well-trod tourist trail. You're in a unique civilization, one of the oldest in the life of man, among the largest of all countries and one of the most populated, one-seventh of the human race, 438 million people. Feel the mood in the Jama Masjid Mosque in Delhi. Across a belt of green lawns is surely one of the noblest buildings in India, begun in 1650 by Shah Jahan as a mosque. An insight into the people of India must include a voyage down the Ganges. Besides using the river for transportation, they use it for cleansing the body and spirit. Humble believers ponder the divinity of the Ganges, meditating for hours, days, years, detached from body, nation, the world, seeking God's greatest gift. They simply ask for goodness. The river is also significant to the famed Indian elephant, providing a pleasant interlude to a powerful beast whose skin is thick but sensitive to the sun. Like stepping out of prehistoric times, the mammoth pachyderm is a valuable tool in the hands of diminutive man. The elephant's seeming ability to understand is one of the wonders of nature. The placid Indian is deserving of this four-footed tractor and has gained the reward through character and goodness. For the secret to training the giant is time, patience, and kindness. Not only in the timberlands, they also help out with the tourist trade. With a minimum of spoken commands, the driver steers with his feet. A proud picture to show the folks back home is a photograph taken from an elephant's back. If you don't get rocked to sleep, this is a good way to see the sights. Still ahead is Amber Fort. Here was the capital of the Ur, with a hall of mirrors and by panels of alabaster with the finest inlay. Beauty is a part of their way of life, expressed in their woodcrafts. Perfection is a form of goodness. And in the Hindu faith, the person who follows goodness in this life will be born again in a more exalted position. His products are collector's items across the sea. At the potter's wheel, we also find the mood of India well expressed. Deep concern over a mound of clay describes an artist, not a mere craftsman. India's arts and crafts have always been a prize abroad. With an instinctive feeling for symmetry, infinite patience in the background of centuries, the Indian produces goods of rare excellence.
But what part does the elegant sari play in the character of India? Besides having widespread popularity with visitors, the versatile sari originally reflected a reverence for motherhood, the main purpose in life for an Indian woman. Draping her in the colorful garb is supposed to clothe her in purity and chastity. More up-to-date reasons are dignity and glamour. Different drapes typify specific sections of the subcontinent, but a woman can wrap it in various styles to suit her mood. Even in the dance, there is the traditional reserve and restraint within the performance. Infusing the ideals of discipline with mental and physical welfare are progressive educational programs such as this on display in Delhi. Reminiscent of days gone by, the horsemen of the palace guard drill in precision. A peaceful, independent Commonwealth nation, India takes pride in her mounted soldiers, brigades which won glory in famous battles of history. The whole world has read the adventures of the Bengal Lancers. An exacting contest is tent pegging, a hard, fast ride. A dangerous stab for a tiny stick. He got it. The coordination and timing must be perfect. Will this Lancer get it? Ah, oh, he missed it. Too bad. The game's as old as the cavalry and as popular as ever in India today. Throughout the ranks, there is an air of nobility. There is also an unswerving dedication to the new nation. Independent since 1947, like yesterday in their long past. A history which saw the Hindu religion appear in 2400 BC, the Persians in 500 BC, Alexander the Great in 300 BC, Vasco da Gama in 1500, the British in 1750. Can ornate structures of another age tell us of a people today? In Kajuraho, ancestors show similar fine detail in artwork which reveals the same deep love between man and wife that exists in their present day society. At the Palace of Breezes in Jaipur, you see an exquisite example of elaborate and fanciful architecture but the people themselves remain ultra-conservative in their personality. The buildings of Fatapur Sikri were constructed over a period of a century and a half, from 1556 to 1707. Though Agra blossomed forth during the reign of Akbar the Great, the true measure of his eminence is the imposing stone capital built by him in Fatapur Sikri. Twenty-six miles from Fatapur Sikri is Agra Fort, a mile and a half in circumference of almost unbroken masonry with glistening towers. A palace fortress, the rusty red structure with white domes, encloses many relics of old splendor. But a, Agra's world fame is due mainly to a radiant structure described as the most beautiful of man's masterpieces. 
caught in the mood of the romantic Taj Mahal, renowned as the poem in white marble. We might imagine the words of its inspiration. Beauty is love, love is beauty. For it was a man's adoration for a woman that produced this jeweled edifice three centuries ago. An Indian ruler's undying love for his wife, Mumtaza Mahal. Now timeless, ageless, the Taj Mahal belongs to the whole world as a monument to love. Thank you.